प्रेजेंटेड बाय ईबिक्स कैश हर खुशी के लिए काफी है Hello and welcome to the Business Today show. I'm your host Udayan Mukherjee. Over the last 10 years, financial stocks have gone on to create enormous wealth for Indian shareholders. There has been therefore a bit of disappointment over the last year or so when some of these stocks have actually not kept pace with the market. But over the last decade or so, names like HDFC Bank, Kotak Mahindra Bank have created so much wealth for shareholders. Uh, but the stock which has probably gone on to create the most is bajaj finance in fact the story of bajaj finance over the last 10 years is nothing short of astonishing the pace at which it has grown its own business and the amount of wealth it has gone on to create for its shareholders i i think i wouldn't be wrong in saying that it has probably been an even stellar more stellar performer than even the hallowed hdfc banks of the world so it gives me great pleasure to welcome on the show for you today sanjeev bajaj chairman and managing director of bajaj finserv sanjeev is a pleasure to see you again and uh, Uh, thank you very much for joining me today. Great to be here with you. I was just looking at the numbers and your market value and what you've achieved over the last 15 years. I mean, Bajaj Finserv today is about creeping in on three lakh crores market cap. Bajaj Finance is four and a half lakh crores. And in 2006, when the business was carved out, uh, you were, I mean, almost a fledgling finance operation. Uh, and today. I mean, this is the market cap of the two operations that you helm, and Bajaj Auto, the mothership from which you were carved out, is about one lakh crores. I mean, you have actually essentially dwarfed the value of uh, the auto company that you came out of. Would you say that 2006, in that sense, was a was a defining moment for your career? I mean, it is the demerger which actually made you what you are today. In hindsight, Uday, and it clearly was right. The, this last uh, decade and a half. Uh, have been the most significant uh, for my team, for me, for our companies, whether it's Bajaj Finance, uh, our two insurance companies, Bajaj Alliance, uh, who are yet unlisted, and hence we don't talk about them as much as we do for the listed companies. And as a result, the parent company, Bajaj Finserv, that you referred to as well. Um, the great situation uh, about being in 2007 is really when it was. We demerged in 2007. Was uh, That there was only one way that we could go, and that was up. Um, I had over a decade of experience uh, at Bajaj Auto. I ran exports at Bajaj Auto, ran finance, um, and those formative years um, helped us in uh, seeding what now has been this journey for a decade and a half. And I had some very good people with me. Uh, I had a mentor, Nanu Pamnani, who unfortunately passed away suddenly. last year a career city banker um, who knew just about everything about lending and was happy after having retired from uh, city to work probably harder in uh, helping us guiding us uh, build initially bajaj finance and then uh, uh, he agreed to getting involved with the insurance companies we did that the last 4 or 5 years as well uh, we were great leaders we were rajiv i mean we have rajiv jain we have anistin We have Tapan Singhal. More recent years, uh, Tarun Chog at the Life Company, and uh, with each of these, what we have found is a very committed uh, leadership. One that is focusing on innovation, that doesn't uh, get scared of experimenting or failing early. That is highly empowered. That's the environment that my colleagues and I have helped build. We provide them with all the necessary tools, the governance. and uh, this symbiotic relationship between the management team and us on the board is what has helped us uh, build a set of excellent businesses over uh, the past years you could not have foreseen uh, the kind of explosive growth that you have achieved over the, over the last 15 years in that sense in 2007 when the demerger happened did you have a feeling that uh, you did not get the plum cherry because the auto business was really the flagship then and you had the finance part of it which was carved out of it did you feel let down at all oh not at all i chose to do this i chose to do this that's how through the demerger i moved with a small team um, to the financial services side under the umbrella of bajaj finser the holding company and uh, i was very clear that uh, with my uh, past experience at bajaj auto 
my team and I were ready to build something new. Uh, Rajiv, my older brother, was doing very well at Bajaj Auto, continues to do well. And while our financial services businesses have uh, exceeded in growth, they have to keep in mind that Bajaj Auto in the last decade and a half has also done exceedingly well. It's the most valuable uh, uh, motorcycle company today in the country and one of the most valuable in the world. Um, so our performance does nothing to take away from theirs. But it was very much my choice. Uh, as a 37-year-old, I was neither too young nor too old. And and very honestly, when I think back, I didn't think too much about the decision. Uh, to me, it was, uh, as I said, the opportunity to build something new, to learn while building it. I had the benefit of having Nanu Pamnani with me. And uh, we just went about uh, doing uh, our uh, task and didn't think too much about it. Now you've set this benchmark for yourself. I mean, I was just going through the numbers over the last decade. You've grown your loan book by 35% annually and your profits by that's roughly the same number. I mean, that's a very hard uh, yardstick to beat. Given what is happening with consumer incomes, employment, and even the competitive situation in the market now, how confident are you of replicating that kind of a growth in the years to come? This is going to be a digitally driven decade. This is a decade where uh, customers have started experiencing various pro products digitally, starting with retail, starting with travel and hospitality in the last two or three years. They are seeing and expecting more and more from uh, traditional companies, including financial services companies, to at least provide them with that same experience, at least sell them simple loans, simple insurance products in a frictionless manner uh, over digital platforms. And at the same time, invest digitally within the company as well so that you can deliver at a higher level of quality and uh, efficiency to these customers. And that's what our businesses have been focusing on. Um, we have the advantage of a very large physical network that we work with, over 100,000 stores around the country. And our own strategy of being omnipresent, a combination of physical and digital, we believe is a differentiated strategy that helps us leverage the best of both worlds. And that will take us ahead for the next decade. We've been working on a significant uh, internal digital transformation program in Bajaj Finance the last year and a half. We call it three in one, so that in three digital clicks, we can provide you with any one product of ours and any more uh, thereafter. Very significant focus on cross-sell. Even in the first half of this year, nearly 60% of our loans were to existing customers. Just in Bajaj Finance, we have over 50 million such customers that are credit tested that we want to lend more to sell multiple financial products to. And when I see across the financial services groups, we have over 100 million when I add the two insurance companies. So with the right data privacy, the right data protection, we have a significant opportunity in the coming decade. What those growth numbers are, who knows? I don't have a crystal ball. But what I do know is that uh, the opportunity is very significant. I was hoping that I would be able to talk in greater detail about this digital transformation plan because by this time, uh, I was expecting like most people that uh, maybe your merchant app or the complete merchant app and consumer app will be up. But I believe now it will be up in February. But could you give me a sneak peek into what a Bajaj Finance, Bajaj FinServe con uh, consumer will actually be able to experience when he comes on to your app when the whole thing is unveiled in February, in simple terms. We have a lending platform. We have an e-commerce platform for all our consumer uh, product uh, financing. We have an insurance platform. We have an investment platform. And uh, we have the payment platform. The payment platform is something that we have just started rolling out. And uh, this has not only our own digital wallet now, because we've got the PPI license from RBI, last year. Uh, it also has, uh, as I said, UPI as a method of payment. It's got our digital EMI card. Nobody else has that in the country. We have over, uh, what, 15, 18 million uh, EMI card customers. And it has our digital credit card, um, which uh, we have one launched with RBL Bank. We have a second one that we will launch with another bank uh, next year. So the payment platform is now in place. It is getting rolled out. And between now and February, March is when we will roll out each of these platforms. The benefit of creating them in, modular, in a modular manner is that these platforms 
can then be worked on independently uh, because customer behavior sometimes and expectations can be different. Plus, these are different products. We are dealing with different partners and intermediaries as well. But the technology at the back end has been created by our team. And as a result, that is seamless. So you can run each of these platforms individually, you can run them together. So they work that way as well. And we think platform as a business itself could be an exciting idea a few years down the line. So it would allow us even to do that. Since you mentioned the payments platform and I can see how the architecture will work. Uh, you know, the big question is how do you uh, basically place these, uh, these platforms or these proprietary uh, platforms against digital players who are focused on one of these pieces at the time like in wallets it would be paytm in your broking proprietary broking platform you would have to go up with the likes of zerotha how do you see bajaj finance competing with these focused fintech players who are also trying to do the same thing that you are doing but they are more focused because they are tackling only one part of it how do these businesses make money today like when electricity was first uh, uh, invented and the first set of machines came in or discovered, um, there was value for the first set of companies that produce electricity. But over a period of time, it became a commodity. The same way the platform today accesses customers, whether a payment platform or a discount brokerage platform. And there is an expectation from investors that just because you've accessed those customers, you will make money on those customers at a future date. How will you make that money? by selling them financial products and solutions. Distribution can only help you make so much money. And I'm, and I'm willing to put a stake in the ground to say if you are talking five years down the line, the companies that only distribute will not make any significant money. And we can see some of those examples even today. To make money in financial services, you have to manufacture those products. Um, so you have to manufacture the loans, you have to manufacture the insurance policies. That's where the money lies. But then that's where other capabilities are required, risk capabilities, underlying capabilities, capital is required, regulatory licenses are required. And where Bajaj FinServe has a huge opportunity is, we already have those in place. We already run very profitable businesses that deal with tens of millions of customers every year across financial services products. What we now have is a set of platforms, mm -hmm. additional platforms, which is creating the digital version of the old physical experience and better as we move ahead. Who the winners will be, we will see down the line. I have a follow up question if you will allow me because it's really the nub of the issue that you're talking about now and I want to ask you a question about it. Uh, given what you've just said, explain to me how these companies, these this fintech companies will actually go about using private equity capital to do what you are doing on say the lending side or the manufacturing of the financial product that you spoke about. Do you think they can bring that kind of leverage, which is the heart of the lending business with access to private equity capital, but without access to deposit capital, which is your oxygen? How, how will they do it? Very difficult to do because as you know, this business, especially the lending business, whether you're a bank or an NBFC or a microfinance uh, company, is all about managing leverage, uh, all about managing low cost borrowing, all about managing risk or managing collections. Look at it this way with Bajaj Finance's size, every month we manage over four, four and a half crore payments. And even if 10% of those bounce, look at the number of collection uh, that we have to manage every month. You have to build capability of that. We have a huge physical network digitally enabled um, that uh, accesses customers, voice recordings, because customers complain often, so you need, uh, you need to have proof of how you're engaging with the customers. It takes time, effort, money, and experience to build this. You can't build these overnight. Having said that, it requires time and patience. So if there is one of these uh, platforms that is willing to get an NBFC license to build this out, it will take them 10 years. And if they are patient, they've got good quality management, they will reach a particular level. But the big difference between doing it today and doing it 15 years ago when we did it was, we had a reasonably, I would say, benign competitive landscape because this was 2008, 2009. The world had just gone through a huge crisis. Uh, you had Indian banks and lending institutions that were lightening 
their uh, presence in the consumer space. A lot of people thought we were stupid about for uh, venturing out at that time. But fortunately for us, the competitive behavior uh, was benign. So we only had to stay focused, keep our head and feet firmly uh, on the ground and uh, build those businesses out. There's a lot more competition right now. And without mm-hmm. leverage, you cannot get into the manufacturing of uh, lending products. So that's why you can be a distributor. You can be a highly efficient distributor. And uh, on, on that basis, you can make some money. You would be able to build a business to a particular size. You could align with a certain set of uh, product manufacturers on the financial services side. But at the same time, those incumbents are going to come back as well. They're going to build those capabilities. And, and you have challenges like us in the middle who have challenged the incumbents over the last decade, decade and a half, and will challenge these new companies going forward as well. So contrary to the general belief among lots of people in the market today that the fintechs will actually challenge and shake the dominance of entrenched financial players. Are you saying that it's the other way around? You can actually do what the fintechs are doing with greater ease than the fintechs being able to do what you are doing? Absolutely. But it's not just this way or that. Let's not take credit away from the fact that the fintechs have leveraged the digital space They've built these intuitive customer interfaces. They are building capabilities in one area, but building them quite well. And uh, they have teams that are aligned to a future way of doing business. That's the digital way. But they have significant shortcomings as well. Uh, They don't, as I mentioned earlier, they don't have a book, a financial book. They don't have the regulatory license. They don't know how to manage risk. Uh, Some of them are learning to do that now, uh, and the better ones will become successful. But in general, they don't have that ability. They don't have the ability to manage assets and liabilities. That is the area that they need to build capabilities on. Versus that, when you look at the incumbents, the incumbents are really good in all the stuff I mentioned towards uh, the latter part, and that's really difficult to build over time. But the incumbents also get stuck. Many of them, we get stuck in successes of the past. We have a culture within our companies that if something is not broken for three to four years, review it, break it, and rebuild it for the future. Don't stay comfortable with successes of the past because that is not necessarily the direction for the future. Uh, But a lot of incumbents are just happy doing the same thing for decades at end. They are not going to do well going forward. Second, incumbents, banks, NBFCs, insurance companies come under very significant regulatory oversight. And this is where, in, and and the, understandably so, because we handle and protect people's money. But that should not become stifling. We have to work with the regulators and the, most of the regulators have sandbox environments created for new products, new solutions, new ways of doing things. We have to do this a lot more proactively with them so that we keep innovating in regulation as well to align ourselves with future customer expectations. Fair enough. Now, you spoke about licenses. I want to quickly get that out of, out of the way. But you've Obviously, it's an aspiration for uh, you to have a banking license. It has not come about so far. There was an interesting one uh, incident recently about how Bharat Pay got a banking license. Where are you with that? And do you think it's the realm of reality that you will have a Bajaj bank one day? For a country as large as India, we have hardly any banks. Sri Lanka, I believe, has more banks than India. The U.S. has thousands of banks. That's how there's innovation that comes into banking. We have a handful of banks who have been running, uh, and many of my banking friends will not like me saying that, but who have been running in a monopolistic environment. They've been petitioning uh, against giving out of new bank licenses. They look at their capability and service. If they were doing so well, would a Bajaj Finance exist today? Would all these fintechs exist today? They are existing because there are significant gaps between customer expectation and what these incumbents uh, provide. So there is a need for many more lending institutions, whether you call them NBFCs and banks. Now let's uh, come to a third point over here. If we have to build a long-term institution, I believe with quality, you need to have skin in the game. And as promoters, we must have significant ownership. If we don't have that ownership, how do we control in the right manner long-term strategy? We will again be relegated to the uh, last financial crisis where professional management come with a very short-term outlook. Investors reward them for a short-term outlook. 
and they make mistakes because they are not focused to building long term institutions when you have skin in the game when you have a large stake there both you can control your future to a large extent but you are also aligned monetarily with uh, that future and you have enough regulations available to provide all kinds of information and to make sure there is proper supervision so to me this becomes an important aspect as well lastly as the world is getting more and more digital we have to ask ourselves that the concept of banking which was an aggregated concept of pe people keeping their money taking loans taking financial products uh, going to a local branch this concept is ripe for disintermediation we are already seeing that today if you need a auto loan you need a home loan you need uh, to pay at a restaurant you're not going and using just the app or tools of one particular bank you're using multiple apps so is banking itself un uh, going to undergo a transformative change if so what should and what will that new bank license look like i think there are a lot of open questions up uh, in the air but at, as bajaj finance at least uh, we've been fortunate enough in the last uh, decade and a half to build a large reasonably large size uh, lending institution under an ndfc license competing with the best banks and uh, building a capable uh, business and uh, we think the landscape the opportunity is large enough for many decades to come to continue doing this here let me ask you a few personal questions you spoke about nanu pamnani and he, he is regarded as uh, a, a real uh, achiever in the financial space but what's your equation with your dad like i mean uh, do you regard him as one of your mentors do you still turn to him for advice uh, very clearly so yes uh, from my early years as well uh, and uh, my father has always been one as you know to speak his mind whether it was uh, when we were children uh, or uh, in our teenage years or even when we started working but he's also been someone at least in my experience who has allowed us to do what we think is right he's warned us where he thought there were pitfalls but he's also credited us where we took decisions which we thought were right and they came out well at the same time to have somebody with his experience uh, there you always had this uh, uh, i would say shielding hand that if something truly went uh, out of whack he would play that role uh, and that is today true even today at overall strategy and on the face of it you always come across as fairly reserved maybe i say it by comparison because judging by your father and your brother they seem very outspoken and they will hold forth on anything from state of the economy to politics to current day social issues you seem to be more low key is that a incorrect assessment maybe you are not like that in your private life no i think it's reasonably is reasonably correct when you're uh, sitting at a dining table and two people are speaking a lot and somebody has to listen as well see so uh, so i do the <laughs> listening part um Uh, and and to that extent my personality is a little different but uh, i think what's important is that each one of us uh, is driven to build excellent businesses we have our own ways of doing this but uh, um, the goal ends up being very similar and um, i've always believed that in a conversation i learn a lot by listening to the other person i believe there can always be two sides uh to a point of view in most cases that's what uh, a lot of people wonder what MB an mba teaches you and my mba at harvard taught me that there can always be more than one way to look at stuff so my way of doing things is to understand issues to listen to others and this is true with my colleagues including mid management that i sit with i mentor a number of them i spend a lot of time listening to them because then i understand them well i understand their issues well and then when i give my point of view it becomes a lot more relevant so i don't need to hear my own voice uh, and i'm not saying this in any negative way uh, is just my personality uh, i find it works for me well i've learned a lot by listening to you today uh, sanjeev pajaj thank you very much for your time and it was an excellent conversation and had a great time listening to you all the best for the future and thank you very much for your time today thank you for having me here today thank you very much